Thank you, Lord, for today. We appreciate the fact that we can come and study your word. We thank you for the fact that the Holy Spirit leads us into whatever you would have us to know. And in doing so, it allows us to have information to do battle when we leave this room against a world that does not care for you. Pray that you watch over the ones, Lord, that are on that list going around, that you pay attention to our prayers due to the simple fact that you said we're supposed to talk to you. And when we do so, we do it in a fashion that allows us to just unload and be free from the burden of it because we've given it to you. And in doing so, pray that you work in those situations, ones that are especially serious, and that you allow us to continue to pray for the ones across the street, Lord, that are hearing sermons, messages, and that might have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, and that they can come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the weather, especially the sunshine and the coolness. And as we do so, Lord, just keep it coming, and allow us to get just a little bit cooler. In Christ's name, amen. <laughs> <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, yeah, hang on. I think I still got some stash. All right. What else? Anything else to say? I do have one thing. Um, remember when we said something about the ark? When I drew that wonderful picture on the fort? Um, I did scout up a little bit of information for it from, from different things. The last historical time that the ark was mentioned, okay? I wasn't sure which ark you were talking about. This is the, not the boat. This is the one with the sticks, okay? The ark of the covenant. It was in. It must have been the art drawing that we were confused. That's with. probably. What it, was. <laughs> it looks similar to a boat. Yeah. Anyway, it was in Second Chronicles 35. They mention it with the Passover feast that they have with King Josiah, and this is one of the few times that King Josiah didn't do what he was supposed to do, and the Lord told him not to mess with the people that were bugging him after the Passover, and he did, and he hid himself by putting himself a different out outfit on, getting in the front chariot, and plump got himself shot with an arrow. So he died. Okay. But the biggest thing is that they have different mentions of it at different times. But the next one comes with the disappearance after the Babylonian captivity in the 6th century. So the 500s, somewhere in that neighborhood. The Levites asked for it to be returned so that it could be around for the dedication of the temple. But there's no mention of it being returned. All right. The next part is in the Maccabees. Remember I told you the Maccabees had stories about it? Well, they have a section in there where the Jeremiah followed a divine revelation. Order the tabernacle of the meeting and the Ark of the Covenant should accompany him when he went back to the mountain which Moses received the, the tablets. All right? And he said, there he found a house, or a cave in this case, to put all of those items in that cave. That is about the last time any of that stuff is heard from. Um... Any of you that knew, do any kind of study of archaeological stuff know of a gentleman by the name of Vendel Jones? Okay, he's passed away, since passed away, but he was continuously looking for that ark. He was looking for the rabbit skins. He was looking for the different um, incense pieces that went with it and found some of the stuff, but never found that. To our knowledge, the ark has not been found. More than likely, it will be found by the time shooting match gets tanked up for the tribulation because it will have to be around again for the institution of all of their old-time ritualistic stuff, all the different feasts and things. So that's as much as we know so far. Okay? So, anyway, it was interesting. And then this will be your verse. Everybody should know this one by heart anyway. And you will find out what it really says. Because of what you have in English there is not what it really says in the Greek. If you have the interlinear, you get a closer idea. Somebody better figure out what goodwill means. That will help a lot. Okay? Somebody want to read it if you have it? If not, I do. All right? Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill toward men.
pretty simple, right? Except that's not what it says. So <laughs> you have a lot of huh? Mine says um, you even got extra words on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Okay, that's a little closer. That's a little closer. That's why I say you need to scout up what goodwill means. Now, what version is that? Do you remember? Yeah, this is NIV. NIV? Okay. The inner linear doesn't say goodwill. No, exactly. Peace. Uh -huh. So that's why I say you need to scout that. Mine's a little different from that. Okay, go ahead. Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. Uh oh, see, they're getting close. What version is that? MacArthur. MacArthur, okay. All right. Well, I just said, he's on All right. So, do you see what I'm saying? The scout's all over the place. Go ahead. What? I said, uh, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. There you go. That one's pretty good. And what version is that? Um, uh, New International Version. Okay, New International. So, it's not peace to everybody. Oh, son of a gun. <laughs> Well, yeah, exactly. And that is kind of a critical deal <laughs> when you get the swing of peace around. So, anyway, just so we can mess up another Christmas verse, okay? All right, anything else, Mrs. A? All right, here you go. The message of Christmas is that the visible world is bound to the invisible spirit world, spiritual world. Everybody in our uncle tries to get rid of the thing and it just keeps showing up. I mean, I don't know how many years, how long have they been trying to get rid of Jesus? A bunch of years? Not working. And you get a president that likes to say it, that even makes it worse. <laughs> so, all right. What page are we on, boss? 231, Redemption. 231, Redemption. Oh, good. <laughs> Bobby. Yes, ma'am. Can you mention about our breakfast? Because some people. Oh, yes, ma'am. I better do that. Breakfast. Uh, what day? 17. 17. Thank goodness somebody knows. 17, 8 30. Get here. So you have time to talk and chat and eat and, and bring a, an ornament exchange. A nice ornament. Unless Ken brings his paintbrush with a string. <laughs> hey, whatever works. All right. So, and if you do, if there's folks that aren't here, we'll try to keep telling it. And then what? What do we put up? Run the list around next week, so we know what kind of groceries you're bringing. Good things, not test kitchen things. Okay. You don't want to be a guinea pig. No. Not, no. Not, 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 not. <laughs> Something that's already passed the test. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Seventeen. So if a spouse tries it, is that passing the test? <laughs> Only if the spouse lives. Yeah. <laughs> and I know the church isn't here. <laughs> That's why I said it. <laughs> uh, I mean, most of the time, you know what's good for breakfast. That's all that matters. All right. We got redemption. Spoken of truckloads of times. And our verse part, this has redemption. It says grace through the redemption. And we've got all scribbled down here. Redemption and Thayer. I told you Thayer is the guy that uses a lot of words for a lot of things. This is a word used to denote deliverance effect through the death of Christ from the retributive wrath of the holy God and merited penalty of sin. In other words, Christ goes to the cross. God's wrath has a place to go to the cross, in his body, and when he goes into his body, what happens? He has power. Say it loud. He has power. He has power. What does he, kind of power does he have? He has power over death now. Why? Because all the wrath that was to be expended on you for being an individual that stepped away from him is now shoved into Christ on the cross. Alright? And it had absolutely... Well, they use the term blood, but you really, someday we're going to have to do a study on that word right there because it really isn't necessarily the blood. It's the fact he had life that was perfect, and he gave that life 
to the world, which is really what John 3.16 is trying to get across. But that's trying to get it across to somebody that's very simplistic in their thought process as far as God and what salvation is. That is really a, uh, a kindergarten verse for the lost. Okay, they, they can wrap their head around that. They can grasp that. It is not really a theological deep sentence, but it has all the context that you need to know that there's a God out there that cares about you. Go ahead. No, I was just saying what, what the sentence, what, what it is. Mm -hmm. John, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That type of stuff. When he gives a verse like that, there's all kinds of things that are taking place, but he needs to have some way to get across to you his policy as to how I'm going to deal with the fact that you're as lost as the ball in high weeds. Then go to John 3.18. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Read it. Well, I mean, because because it's, it's a finish of the verse. Right. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. There you go. No peace on earth for him. <laughs> <laughs> you blast onto that puppy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, or anywhere else probably. Okay? But the thing of it is, is, that's why redemption is kind of like a trigger word when it comes to this kind of stuff. All right? Grace and all that is God, that God is free to do for man on the basis of the work of Christ on the cross. That's the definition of grace. <laughs> Okay, you have taken a step when you go to the cross of allowing you to be able to be blessed, not because of your salvation, but because of the justification that comes out of the cross. That's where you get your blessings from. That's what they're speaking of here. Redemption, one of the big three concepts of soteriology. All right, soteriology is a big word for salvation. All right. <clears throat> Under the concept of soteriology, the blood of Christ is used to describe the work of the second person of the Trinity. Blood is a symbol. I am symbol of something. Um, when you build a house and you build it by yourself, what do they generally call that? Farm process. <laughs> <laughs> A long process. <laughs> they, they say you're going to put your blood, sweat, and tears into a project. That means you're vested in it. Okay? That's how they look at these things. That's where these things come from. Well, this is pretty much what you've got going on here. Christ said, okay, I'll put my blood down, my life down, for all these things to take place. Not a problem. Simple program. It is difficult for man to grasp because man likes to help. And that's not his job. All right? Now, the blood refers to the judgment of the Christ on the cross. Once again, the symbol means something. All right? I have told you a thousand times, the man did not bleed to death on the cross. Very important. Medically, it is knowable why because when they poked him in the side what came running out which meant he didn't die that way he did not bleed to death all right and the thing of it is is it said i give my life up willingly willingly okay and he did so he gave up part of his life willingly before he passed away. Why? So that this deal here could be done. All right? That's what they're shooting for with all of this stuff. Creation, created salvation. Father, work at the cross. Crino, active voice, he judged. All right? Everything that would have been dumped on you was dumped on Christ. Son of Christ, Crino, my passive voice was judged. He never said a word. How do we know he didn't do anything detrimental to this program? One reason and one reason only. At the end of this thing, the Lord said he was satisfied with what he had done. How do we know? Go ahead. How do we, how do we know that? What did he do in three days? <gasps> if he was not satisfied, 
We know now that because of justice and righteousness, whatever righteousness sees, justice meets out. He had met the righteousness program. Justice could do what he had to do, and it would do one thing, and that's why the word justice is in it. He is justified. Oh. <coughs> it is done. What did he say? Yeah, what did he mean when he said it is done? It is done. I guess two things. The program is done and he's going to die. He's to, yes. And it had to be in that order, by the way. It had to be one, two. It can't be two, one. He was right before he died. Yeah, everything was done. It is done. The program, the plan is complete. Everything's going to be squared away. Everybody can now be redeemed. And then number two, show's over. Okay. That's how that works. Nothing happens. I don't know why people stumble over it so bad. Boy, they sure do. All right. Now, next, flip that puppy over. We'll keep on going. So, teriology debate three. This is kind of interesting. I don't know whether you've ever paid any attention to it or not. Have you heard all these words before? Propitiation, redemption, and reconciliation. Yeah. Okay, can you give me really good definitions for them? No, I can't. They're all over the chart. Everybody's got their own. But there is one good thing about it. You can see with this little chart right here, when you got TG, you got P. All right? When you got TS, you got R. And when you got TM, you got R. You can remember all that, right? Why is it talking about towards God? What did redemption do as far as as far as all that as far as salvation goes? God designed it. Who, who laid it out? Who worked it? Christ worked it. Jesus worked it. And then what was the last part? Towards man, what's the reconciliation part? <coughs> who does that for you? How do you talk to heaven? Praying. Through the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Through the Holy Spirit by praying. All right. So here's the Holy Spirit over here. See, everybody's in the ballpark. Everybody's in the game. Every time. All right? And when you lead somebody to Jesus Christ, all you're doing is you're saying, all of this stuff that took place for a sinner, and you're an ambassador. You're the one that can show them. You're the one that can talk to them. You're the one that can work them through this. Because how many times... Do you remember who you went to to ask questions when you were talking about your walk with the Lord before you made your decision? Who did you talk to? Some people talk to their mom and dad. I usually got a chance to talk to 75-year-old Sunday school teachers. You know how much knowledge they have? And they, and please, anybody in here ever teach kids in Sunday school. Okay. You remember how, what it was like teaching them? You remember the oddball questions that came out of their heads? <laughs> well, the thing is, is if you're, if you're a functioning Christian, you should be well prepared for oddball questions. All right? And the reason that you need to be functioning is because the only person that's going to answer that oddball question is an indwelling Holy Spirit that knows what's coming. Okay? And you have, a, and at the age of 75, you have a lot of experiential knowledge to put on the, on the table when, when somebody like me says, well, you know, how do you know that the mountain actually had a bush that didn't get consumed by fire? You don't expect that out of a 12 year old. But when you've been raised in the church, these are things that are part of your life. And you know what he told me? Really interesting, because I said, you know, I got him with this one. The guy's going to blow this one all over. Here. And he says, you know, by the way, if I remember correctly, you read the same verse that I did about the guy that started this whole show. Go back to Genesis, would you? <laughs> In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And I said, and? He said, do you think it's beyond him to make a bush burn and not go away? Unfortunately, a 12-year-old can't come up with a snappy comeback, right? 
get so, a college educated full can. Well, yeah, I'm sure they can. But at my age, you say, well, you know, I've got something to work with now, all right? And they're smart people. And that's why Robbie Zachariah is, is it's a pleasure to watch him when he goes and speaks to these to these college campi and, and talks to these kids because they come up with some of these heavy duty philosophical tangled up with faith, tangled up with religion questions. And he usually gives them a, a very sound answer. Not a snarky answer, but a sound answer. And it's a pleasure to watch because it's nice to see somebody that actually thinks on their feet. Keep so, an eye on Frank Turek too. Who? Frank Turek. Okay. Is yeah. he on the guy that co wrote, co -wrote uh, mm -hmm. I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. Okay. Or Norman All right. Yeah. Anybody that can work through it in those ways is going to have answers that are beneficial. Yeah. That's why it's best to do that. All right. Now, here we go. Definition of redemption is Christ's work on the cross directed towards sin. Human race is born uh, into a slave market of sin. Okay. Everybody. We've gone through Romans. If you haven't gotten that, that everybody's in the same basket, you've missed something. Everybody is born into this slave market of sin. Now, there's only one person born outside the slave market of sin. That is our Christ. Okay? It takes someone outside to set us free, and the one with a virgin birth, which is Christ, is the one that can do it. His work outside the market on the cross purchased our freedom or our redemption. All right? Saving work of Christ by which he purchases our freedom from the slave market of sin. The coin of the realm for the purchase is called the blood of Christ. Symbol, symbol, symbol. All right? Coin of the realm speaks of a realm that you and I don't know. And I'll guarantee you, every demon out there knows what the blood of Christ means. And they are not happy when it's used in their presence. All right? Christ being judged on the cross for our sins, which is in Ephesians, it's in Colossians, is what this whole process was about. Christ, Jesus Christ is the only qualified redeemer, virgin birth, personal life of impeccability, resulting in him being perfect in his humanity. All right? Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ is willing Related to his humanity to redeem. Never had to be coerced. Again, you do not coerce people into a belief system in Jesus Christ. That is not your job. You are not a salesperson. Okay? You may be an example if you so desire, but you are not a sales representative. Go ahead. <laughs> You're not. When it comes to, to Christ, Christ willingly did everything he wants. But as far as you, you are not, you do not have the qualifications, the robe, or anything else to force somebody to accept Jesus Christ. Do not shame them into it. Do not but, you know, bother them all the time about it. Don't say... You know, you're going to go to hell if this doesn't happen. Don't, that's not your job. You destroy the message when you do that. Bingo! Every time. You know who has a message that can't be messed with? Christ. If you say, well, I know Christ. I would like to introduce you to Christ. I don't care what your life is. Do you know how many people I talk to that have the most hideous backgrounds you could ever come across? I had a, the, the, the carpenter that taught me what I knew early in my career 30 years ago. I mean, that guy had been every, he, he had, I don't have enough white t-shirts for the women he had. But there's all kinds of salespeople. I mean, there's sometimes yeah. salespeople who aren't pushy. Correct. Instead, they just love the product that they have. That's, and, they, and that's where you're going to be. So you can be a salesperson by saying, oh my gosh, I just love you know, <laughs> you what can. the Lord did for me. And but what you're saying has to match what you're doing. That's usually where you can get in trouble with that. And by, and the only reason I said this is because I've seen people that when they say, you know, I, well, let's put it this way. I've served with people that have been this way. And I see them somewhere not doing what they espouse on the other side, which is the only reason that I would be careful with that. If you put Jesus out there, he never falls. 
He never falters. He never slumps. He never gets in his own way. Any of that? What were you going to say? Well, I was mean, just going to say, it, it's good news. It's not bad news. Correct. When you focus on the exactly. side of it, it ends up being bad news. And that's, Elon, Elon news Musk is a good right. example of a salesperson that loves his product. He loves electric cars. They are a waste of time and money right now. But he loves them so much that he has invested himself in them. Eventually, there may be something functional, but he is beyond that. He is sold out to that program. That's what you need with somebody with Christ, basically. Yeah, but I think the, maybe the, the technical difference here is you're using the, per, uh, the word salesperson. And somebody who is trying to, I'll say, peddle Christ is not trying to sell him. He's trying to give him away because that's how he received it. That's it very possible. That's very possible. So maybe a salesperson is the wrong term. Yeah, maybe. But I, I, you know, it might be a better word for it. You, you can't force it or Correct. extract the Correct. person into Christ. You have to, best you could do is lead the way by example, but really the message is the message. Correct. Exactly. It's so like maybe it's just my terminology is not right. but It's almost like recruiting. Uh, yeah. In a way, I mean, you are. It's not... It, it is still important. It, and the thing of it is, is what, when does somebody want to be part of something? Why does somebody uh, join a gym? Because everybody there is thin and in good shape. <laughs> <laughs> now, how, what kind of recruiting tool is that? Just the evidence itself. Yeah, just. Oh, and the thing of it is, is what? In your mind, you want to be thin and in shape. Or just in shape. Yeah, okay, just in shit. You skip the thin part right now. UCF but, might have a better time recruiting next year. Exactly, because they've, had a, they've right. had a season that's beneficial. Exactly. And Christ at the time, if you're a functioning Christian, you can be a good look for somebody looking for Jesus Christ. But if you're blowing it half the time, then that doesn't work. All right? That's what they're talking about. Christ, he did it willingly. He had all the potentials to do it willingly. All right? Now... Then it says Jesus Christ, as far as this is, he says, he will, his will was subject to the Father. So he did it willingly, even though he had a will, he did it because the Father was supreme at that particular time. Christ also had a doctrine of redemption taught in the Old Testament by means of animal blood. No blood in forgiveness. Okay, how do we know that? They had to go on and on and on and on and on. They always had to have something sprinkled on the mercy seat, all right? The blood of Christ is the ransom money. The blood of Christ is the ransom money and purchase price of redemption. Principle of payment is grace. Soul of the believer is redeemed of salvation, not the body. Okay. There's people that give you some kind of weird stories. Just take what the verses say and, and go with that. All right. The redemption removes the condemnation of the Mosaic law. This is what Christ said he came to fulfill. There was a condemnation associated with the law because nobody could keep it. And when Christ died on the cross, that condemnation was removed when you believe in him. All right? That was your, that was your get out of jail free card. Results of redemption, deliverance from the curse of the law, cancellation of sins, Basis for our justification, basis for sanctification. And what is the word sanctification? What's it mean? Anybody have an uh, easy definition for the word? Oh, uh, sanctification. Uh, the ongoing. Go ahead. To be holy? Uh, yeah, that, and holy is, yeah, holy is kind of a, an ethereal, but yes. Go ahead. The ongoing process of becoming like that. Yeah, it's an ongoing process of becoming pure. It's a purity program, if you want to call it that. Um, okay, here we go. How many of you are like Christ? Here's Jesus. Okay. Here's me. Okay. I want to be like that. Okay. Process. What is the process? And you have to understand. Number one, you have to understand I have to be, I have to have doctrine. 
If I don't have doctrine, I'm not moving anywhere. The verses that are in her head move her down the maturity line. Got that? The verses that you tuck away somewhere in your book, your Bible, your, your workplace, whatever, the little ones you put on your screen, the little ones that flash up, the little ones that you look at in the morning, whatever, I don't care. Whatever doctrine it is, when you see that doctrine, it's moving you this way because you're going to act on it if it's in your system. Okay? You mean you have the Holy Spirit in there? Sure, yeah. As a matter of fact, he's the one going through your library all the time. Uh, how many of you have books at home? All right, why? It should need to learn. Any other reason? What do you got it for? Look nice on the shelf. Look nice on the shelf. Okay. <laughs> I've seen a lot of those libraries. That's all right. Okay. Anything else? Any other reason to have books? You guys shut them out and you put your pistol yeah. in there. I don't know. How'd you know it? I mean, to reference. To reference. So that you can go back to them again and again. Um, do you, do, go ahead. You're going to say something. I can see what's on. Some books are just there for pleasure reading. Right. Some books are there for pleasure reading. That's right. Mm -hmm. When I pull out Cowboys and Indians, my magazine, I go back through the years. All the stories are new to me. When I pull out Systematic Theology by Alice Schaefer, that's heavy duty reading, but there's still information in there that I want to have again and again and again. And when I keep putting that, Indian, that stuff in, if I have an Indians and Cowboys information, that's what comes out. But if I have Alice Schaefer in there, that comes out. If I have Worthington in there, that comes out. You see what I'm saying? So that's what the deal is here. So I've got doctrine, and it's going to move me along this line. And every time I go down this line, I'm going to be a little bit closer to being like Christ. And I am more and more and more and more and more and more sanctified. Okay? Um, how many of you are... Okay, now I was 12. 12. No, 65. How many years is that? How many? 53. 53. Okay. Okay. There's how many years I have on the timeline. All right. Now, everybody, if, if every one of these was a 10-year increment, shucks, I'm almost, I'm, I'm living next to the guy. It doesn't work that way. Oh, shh. <laughs> but it can be, you know, it can be, you know, it can be one of those deals every now and again when you come off the rail and you're not growing. So I'm slowing my sanctification process down. But the thing is, is how many, uh, how many of you know what? activates your sanctification process. Very important. Very uh, tricky little system. Tricky little system that the Lord put together. Tests that he puts Tests, yes. It's, uh, what, do you, what do they call it? Um, situations. Situational awareness. Yeah, isn't that, isn't, that a, isn't, that a big, isn't that a company term? Yeah. A situation arises. Situation that causes you to draw on your doctrine. And when you draw on your doctrine, you're drawing on the correct stuff. So you're doing one thing that is imperative to you, and you are moving along the maturity line. Why? Because you can't have doctrine and not mature. Because if it is, then the situation gets more critical and more critical and more critical until you finally get where you need to be. My sister called. Um, we've been working with her because I told you she's got some kind of gastro something or other yuppity yuppity yuppity, so long words. Anyway, she said, I can't get into sh to Mayo until January 31st. Okay, so I called and sent her a text and I said, do me a favor and listen to me. I said, prayer changes things. That's all I said. She was up there on, what day was she up there? Tuesday, I think. Tuesday of this week. Tuesday, she was at Mayo. 6.30 in the morning. She had a plan. Yeah. So I said, do you remember when you told me you could be in Mayo? And she mousily said, yes, I remember. I said, now, this way next part of this program is her mother, her birth mother called her and told her now after how many years that she had had the same problem. Her response was, oh, I am so angry. And I cut her off 
at the knees and I said, yeah, it's really good to have that information. And, and she changed her attitude. I said, your mental attitude is going to change everything. She said, okay. Then they gave her a time of, I think it's in. She has to go back this month for tests. Yeah, they're going to go in January, and do a, whole, a couple of days, 14 months of tests, or 14, 14 tests. tests. To tell her what's going on, but they already have a better idea, and they also found something in a lymph gland. So what I'm telling you is, please understand, these situations are critical. She has fought the Lord her whole life. Okay, that's just the way she's been. Fine, you're going to learn the hard way. Now, the next story is, there's another individual that has a wrestling match. Remember Tom sitting over here last week? Remember he had a problem with his ribs? Remember he had a problem with his tummy? Okay? They went in this week and they think he has lymphoma. Okay? Now, I'm telling you that so you can pray for him because they told me to. The test will come back this week. Lymphoma is more treatable today than it ever was before. That's not so much the problem. The problem is the individual that has it, Tom. Tom fights with the Lord constantly. Okay? Um, and I told his wife, I said, this is your time to minister to him. And I mean, Barbara's been with him the whole time. And I said, no matter what your opinion is of what he's done, what's going on, any of that stuff, now's the time to exhibit Christ for this man to see if it's a breakthrough. Why? She needs to be sanctified, he needs to be sanctified, and they have a situation that can allow that to happen. And it's probably been, what, a couple of months, three months since they started coming back to Sunday school. So do you understand what I'm telling you? Sanctification is a process, not a smooth process by any stretch of the imagination. But it is a process. All right? And we all have to go through it. Nobody's exempt. I don't know why people think they should get a pass, but they, they do at times. But at any rate, this is what's going on with what they're talking about here. Now, and I said, <coughs> basis for sanctification, the basis for eternal inheritance of the believer, basis for strategic victory in Christ of the angelic conflict. That means you and I are on the winning side of a fight, okay? The angelic conflict is what's taking place around you at all times. Uh, does anybody ever feel that they've been looking, they, they saw somebody looking at them, but you turn and there's nobody there? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, no. And she goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know whether they do that or not. I haven't found the Bible verse, but I'm pretty sure that there's a, if there's a tear in the, between the two worlds and an angel goes, and you see them, I don't know whether they get caught or not. But... I have that situation different times. Or you feel that somebody like breathing down the back of your neck or something? Well, I, don't, I try not to keep it that personal. Well, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but yeah. Sometimes, you know, you can just be sitting in the house and you feel like, oh. But yeah, all I'm saying is it's there. And I'm just saying all of these things take place. There's an angelic conflict going on. You're a pawn. Okay, but you're a good pawn. Yes, ma'am. My son, Douglas called me this week and told me that he was getting rid of some trash and he was on I-95 and he was speeding in his truck, a little truck, and he was going 80 miles an hour in the left lane and he said it's there were three trailer trucks in front of him and he said this little voice kept saying get to the right, get to the right and he's going well I got a long way to go to get off my exit, why? All right, I'll get to the right. He gets to the right, and it, it slows down, of course. He said they were crawling, so he was at 35 miles an hour. When he had a, a blowout in the front tire, he said, Mom, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be here. <laughs> yes, and it's imperative that you keep the uh, religious wax out of your ears yeah. so that you hear these things yeah. when they do happen. Yeah. And there's tons of times when you don't respond, and you say, dink, I don't know if you're trying to done, but it is, yes. It's a pleasure. It's fun. So, and it's, it's just, let's the Lord, you know, kind of sneak a little 
blip into your life that says, oh, by the way, I do exist, and yes, I do communicate, and yes, if you do listen, there are benefits. All right? So, at any rate, it is the redemption of the soul and salvation that leads to the redemption of the body and resurrection, which is Ephesians 1.14. Now, in saying all that, that's all the junk that has to do with redemption. You can do this with every one of them. Soteriology is covered throughout the Bible, and your big deal is you need to know the ones you need to know for when you need to know them. Does that make sense? If you study, how many of you study uh, willy-nilly? Just pick the book up and start letting it rip wherever you're at that day, or do you have an organized fashion to do it? You're organizing your, your study of Romans, whether you realize it or not. I mean, I've had people say, yeah, we went through Romans in six weeks. <coughs> wow. And I thought, wow, I wonder what I'm, I must be dragging my feet. You are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, I mean, I, I, I don't think we're teaching. That's the understatement I don't think we're teaching anything that's not beneficial, and it's all through the book. So that's why I covered it because you don't necessarily cover it any other way. Should I speed up a little bit? Don't listen. Don't listen to it. Okay. <laughs> So, but all I'm saying is, it's, a, it's, just, it's just the system is, is kind of put together the way it is. So, and anyway, so, and, I, and, and we just finished the verse off with this, and it says, because of that, the way it's put together, and it says, grace through, through the redemption in Christ Jesus. So it, it completes the sentence, which is a descriptive genitive, this tis that you see here from the definite article used as a relative pronoun. This calls for a verb, okay? And what it amounts to is it's say, making a statement that creates action. All right? And, and the, the, the reason that they, they, the Greek is this way is the way they do it, they put emphasis on verbs much more than nouns. All right? As a matter of fact, I can bring that book in that Mrs. Taylor gave me that parses verbs for you. And it'll go every <coughs> verb in every sentence of the Bible and tell you the, the breakdown of it and whether it's passive, subjunctive, and all that kind of stuff. And in doing so, that's what they're saying, being justified freely, is, is a statement of saying the grace part of this sentence is what's justifying you freely in Jesus Christ. It's all because he wants to do that. And that's basically, um, do we have to get out here by 10 o'clock because of the motorcycles? Does anybody? I don't know anything about that. Okay. Bike rally, okay, good deal. I just want to make sure we're not busy or messing any, anybody up there. So, at any rate. Okay, so we're getting that far. We're trying to do a little better, aren't we? A little better? A little better. A little better. All right. In Christ Jesus that they put here, this is the Redeemer, this is the one that causes redemption, all right? In Galatians 3.24, the law has become our school bus carrying us to Christ that we may be justified by faith. There's a statement right there that helps a lot of people with the word law, okay? And law ends up being a school bus. School bus? Close enough? Yep. Or maybe a milk truck? One of your better drawings. All right. <laughs> it's not the ark. All that money's paying off. <laughs> it's not the ark. All right. And the thing of it is, is, the deal is, the law tells you nothing, really. You don't need to have that. This is mainly pointed towards the Jews. You don't ever have a wrestling match with the law. Your Bible tells you again and again, you've never been under any kind of law, so you never have to worry about this school bus thing. Why do we have the Ten Commandments around? Because our country was founded on it. It was founded on a faith-based system. It was founded on the integrity of God. It was founded on the merit that if an individual was working with this particular integrity-filled God, he would have an integrity-filled, virtuous life. Go read Ben Franklin. But you know they also sent some bad people over. Oh that. yeah, there's a couple of there was a couple of Dave Quinkersons that made the trip. Yes, <laughs> I understand that. And at the same time, though, when we did that, the overall aspect of it is if if the law has something to say, man needs to be able to interpret what the law has to say. 
And the law is telling you again and again, I'm taking you somewhere. You better figure out where we're going. All right? How many of you take a vacation without a plan? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right? We just hop in the car, and by God, we point that sucker north. Oh, we go somewhere, but we don't know what we're going to do there. <laughs> okay? Nothing so, wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. From a melancholy? Always. Yes. Yes. You guys are going to have a meeting, okay? <laughs> 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 we got this morning away before the show's over here. Right. So the deal is, it's taking you somewhere. Now, after, after we have the canon of Scripture completed, we know it's taking us to Jesus. And that's not a problem. All right? As long as you believe in Jesus. But if you don't have that already in the basket, then you've got a wrestling match to take place. Now, Romans 4.25 says, For, on account of, or because of, is what this particular term, who has delivered because of our offenses, was raised again because of our justification. That is a statement about the cross, by the way. Okay? And it's telling you, he went to the cross because of us. All right? And with, with the way that it's put together, the fact that he took all of our sins on this cross, all right? We were justified. And the justification payment was considered propitiation, all these big words. God said, I'm accepting what he did on the cross as payment. Payment. And because it was payment and I accepted it, now, after that, because of that, he can be raised again. Okay? This is protocol, by the way. We had a problem. There was, a, there was a way to fix it. The way to fix it was instituted. The way to fix it was instituted to the positive aspect of God. He said, I accept it. And since he accepted it, it justified this group of people. And since this group of people are now justified, he can be raised up from the dead. Not the other way around. OK? Once again, you see protocol. He can't work with anything that's filthy. His righteousness and integrity will not mess with you on your basis. You are filthy rags. But at the moment this program took place, you became the righteousness of Christ. And once you became the righteousness of Christ, everything can be justified and he can be raised again because he raised it because of what righteousness saw and justice meted out. You are now saved. You are now justified. You are now perfect. You are now in a functioning entity that is totally wrapped up in the one that made the payment, Jesus Christ. <coughs> yes, ma'am. We can know that, um, that the war is already won. Yes, ma'am. But we're um, we're fight we're going through fighting it, but it's already won, and it just lets us know that we are we are in a fight. And, and Correct. That really Correct. And we we already won because uh, we can know that we already won. Because this this says you've already won. Not headed toward. The only victory, problem is coming from victory. The only problem is you remember what happened after Japan fell. What did they have to do? They had to rebuild, but before that, what did they have to do? They met on a ship. Surrender. 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 Okay. That's when the war's over. We've won the war, but how many times have you, anybody read history stories, okay, where they find a Japanese soldier that's been hiding out on an island since the war, and he's still fighting the war? Why is he still fighting the war? Communication. Communications didn't tell them we lost, guys. We had to give up. Please understand something. Satan's as dumb as a stump. He is so deceived. He, his email is not working. He is not getting any flashes from anybody. And all of his people are nothing but yes men. They'll say, oh, no problem. Go for it, Satan. You can get this thing whooped. But yet he knows the time is short. <laughs> Well, he knows the time is short when he, gets, when he gets his past to heaven revoked. That's when he knows time. That's when he gets really ticked. Okay? 
Right now, he's got free access. It's, it's, you know, it's peaches and cream for him right now. He can be rotten as, as day and still get to heaven. And stop by and say, oh, by the way, God, what you got for me today? Can I go bug Joe? No, let's take a different one. Let's go bug Scott today. But when that program ends and he's rejected, then he knows his time is short and he knows more. He knows he's got to do a lot more, a lot harder, a lot faster. Yes, if he can't stand filth, why does he tolerate it? Um, that is a real question for the times. I, um, I don't know whether he accepts them or... If there's no devil, there's no faith. Well, yeah, but, but the devil wasn't instituted to, to create faith. Faith was a all of something beyond that. But my thing is, I don't know why he puts up with them either. I truly don't. Um, that's what the, the only thing, is for. The, That's when he gets rid of it. Well, yeah, but the only thing I can think of as far as why he would hang him around is because he's had a trial, and he's lost the trial, and I don't know how long the appeal is. And right now, he's, on the, he's in the appeal process. That's why, from that point on, from the fall, he's tried to get rid of anybody that might carry the baby, anybody that might know the baby, anybody that might be related to the baby, anybody that all of these things are all dealt with along the way trying to snuff this thing out, try to snuff out the nation Israel, try to snuff out Christians, try to snuff out the Bible. I mean, all the things that he's tried to do is because he's trying to make, you know what the mafia does when they don't want somebody to testify at the trial when they're going to be convicted? Put a contract on them. They go kill them. Bingo. They're gone. Okay. I mean, that's just the way it works. And he's no different. And all this stuff is, he's the father of lies, so he does it all. So his appeal is ongoing. That's the only reason I know that he's around. And God is a just God. He said, okay, you've got your appeal. But and when it's when the appeal's over. I don't know if that's a good term to use, appeal. Well, I don't know. What, what do you call it when you're, what do they call it when you're on, what do you call it? About okay. What I'm thinking is, is that God is allowing Satan to continue to do what he's doing in order to show how powerful he is. To, to, and, without a doubt. Um, but, I, but go ahead. Yeah. Literally. But he appealed to him to Satan himself, and not appeal to God. God's not courtroom. Going to change his mind. He's already right. He's still courtroom protocol of some kind. Well. Isn't he allowing him to do what Satan does until God's plan has been carried Fleshed out? Fleshed out? Very possible. I know that the plan ends when the last person accepts Christ. Right. And it, it, I understand that. that. And, I mean, but we, have, we have free choice to choose God or choose Satan. Correct. And if Satan's, so if Satan's, here, Satan's gone, no then you have no choice. I mean, I understand all the, all the different things. I mean, I, I, why he put it? He put it this way for a reason. I, I don't see anything scripturally to tell me why he left him around, other than you just flesh it out that way. I've got bad and good. Yeah, I but think in the millennium, Satan's gone. Uh, at the beginning of the millennium. <laughs> yeah. Or at the end. No, he's it's, gone. He's gone for the millennium. Beginning. Okay, so he's gone. So there's no satanic influence, and yet people still still have a sin nature. So they're still going right. Cattywampus. Correct. And which is which is like a which is like like an appeal of an appeal, because everybody says, well, if we didn't have Satan, everything would be fine. Well, then, what's all these? What's this bazillion people over here that want to get together with Satan and overcome God? It's, it's one After of, a thousand years of seeing Jesus, I don't know. It's one of those things that when you get to heaven, you're hoping that the light bulb instantly goes on and you I hope, die. Yeah, I hope he fills up ninety percent with a bunch. We just yes. know that, that God is a. It, he's under control. Yeah. He's it's not in the book. Right. Correct. So we're just... There's also the unfallen angels that he's revealing, and they're watching all this stuff, and they, they don't know the whole end, and so... Yeah. And in a sense, they have, can't read the back of the book. Yeah, I know. Kathy. So he's teaching them. Not allowed to cheat and read the back of the book, whatever. You know, it tells you what's going to happen. That's the teacher that yelled at Julie about reading the back of the book. Oh, we're not allowed to read the back of the book? Oh, we always read the back of the book. Okay. <laughs> we always want to know what's going on? Okay. All right. Well, let's, we're done then. We'll pray it off. Hey, wait, you're not praying though. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. What do we got?
Surgery's coming up. Okay. No, 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 no. Whenever. I have to take a, 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 a lot of tests first. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Adams. Well, that's us. Um, <laughs> Josh, home this weekend, taking his final. Flies back to North Dakota on Tuesday. He's back in school, back in college. Julie graduates this week with her master's. Whoa. And yeah, I like that. All right. And Mike Ferger, who I imagine a bunch of you know from the high school, mm -hmm. um, surgery this Wednesday, Florida Hospital, in celebration for colon cancer. Mm -hmm. So just keep him in your prayers. Do you have a copy of the thing that you prayed for? Yeah, there is. Copy's on the table. Oh, here's Yeah, it's on the table out there as you roll out. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, all right, let's pray and I'll turn you Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you lay out, the organization that you have. And above all, I thank you that we allow to put stuff on our shelves that the Holy Spirit can use during the course of this week. Be with us this week that we walk according to your manner of life and that people would notice it. And when they notice it, we can introduce them to somebody that can help them in situations that we may not possibly be able to touch. We ask all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. 